Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we're about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 245 on page 245 and today is our lesson number 151 please turn to the page question number 17 the very first problem dealing with the geometry number 17 let's see what they have to say they give you a little picture here I'm going to reproduce it PQR this is your XY Let's erase these words from before. Here is our y axis, here is our x axis, and this is how the picture is sitting. Oh, blast it. It's sitting on the x axis, isn't it? It's sitting on the x axis. B. Q. And R. That's it. Very simple, very straightforward. And of course, this has to be 90 degrees. This has to be 90 degrees. Otherwise, if if without this symbol, without this symbol of 90 degrees, we would not know that P, PQ is parallel to Y axis. In other words, without the symbol here, we would not know that the line PQ is perpendicular to the X axis. 90 degree tells us that it is perpendicular which is a vital bit, bit of information, otherwise we will not be able to do anything with this picture because we will not know what the x coordinate of q is going to be. We have to know that this is straight. We can't just go with the visual inspection. We cannot tell whether it's tilted this way a little bit or tilted that way just by visual inspection. And as you know by now, uh, as I always remind you, the pictures on the GRE are not drawn to scale. So you have to be told that it's 90 degrees. We cannot assume it. The very first question that they're asking, number 17, is the coordinates of point Q. Well, coordinates of points Q is very straightforward. Point Q has the same x coordinate as P, which is negative 2. And the y coordinate of Q is 0 because uh, it's sitting at the, on the x axis. The coordinates of point Q coordinates of point Q are simply negative 2 and 0. In the second part they are asking for the length of PQ, QR and PR. All right. So PQ, P to Q is P to Q where it goes all the way from 0 to 6 so the length is 6. QR goes all the way from negative 2 to what are the coordinates of R? They must have given us 5 and 0. 5 and 0. So it's 2 units to the left of the y-axis and 5 units to the right of the y-axis. 2 plus 5 is 7, so it's 7. PR, so now we're dealing with triangle PQR is a right angle triangle. So now we're dealing with higher, now we'll have to deal with Pythagorean theorem. Let's pretend that P to R is x. Let's call it x. So therefore, x squared equals 6 squared plus 7 squared. x squared equals 6 squared plus 7 squared which is 36 plus 49 and how much is 36 plus 49? I don't know. Let's take, let's take one from this guy due to this guy so it makes it 50 so we end up with 35 35 plus 50 which gives us 85 so it's 85 so it's the square root of 85 so x is the square root of 85 that's it. Let's make a note here Let's keep on going. So that was the uh, second part. Then they ask you in part C the perimeter. The perimeter of ABC perimeter of triangle, not ABC rather, PQR PQR is simply this guy right here, 6 right here, 6 plus 7 plus this guy the root of 85 and that's it that's your answer 13 plus root of 85 
is the perimeter. That was C. In part D, they ask you for the area. All right, area is very straightforward also. In part D. In part D, they ask for the area of PQR, which is one half base times height. The base is seven. The height is six. Since we have two at the bottom and six on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by two, so the six becomes six becomes three, and the seven times three is twenty-one. That's it. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's more, I guess. Write the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation of the line passing through PR. So they want to go. They want to know everything about this line right here. They want to know its slope. They want to know the slope of this line. They want to know the y-intercept where it cuts the y-axis. And the equation of the line. Hold right, on, let's do it together then. I need the room so I'm going to erase everything. We are done with all of this thing. So for the part A, the answer was uh, the coordinates of Q are negative 2 and 0. For the part B, PQ is 6, QR is 7, P to R is root 85. And the C, the perimeter is 13 plus root 85, and the D, the area of the triangle is eight, uh, 21. So this is part E that we're dealing with. The very first, the very first thing they want is a slope. All right, this is just as well. So the first thing we want is slope which is simply the change in y over the change in x which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2 minus x1 so I'm gonna it's up to you it doesn't really matter which one you call the, the beginning point and which one you call the ending point but since they're written in, in sequence p and r I'm gonna start I'm gonna treat this as our starting point and this is going to be our ending point so in other words, this is going to be x1, y1, and this is going to be x2, y2. y2 is 0. So here we go then. y2 minus y1, which is 0 minus 6, over x2, which is 5, minus 2. Must, must keep track of the minus 2, so it's going to become positive actually. So on the top we have negative 6, on the bottom we have positive 7. So the slope is negative 6, 7. That's the slope. What's the next thing they want? The y-intercept. Alright. I'm going to keep make a note here that the slope, slope is negative 6, 7. And we're going to erase all of this thing. I'm going to start from scratch on, on, the, on the fresh blackboard. So this is the second part of the part E second part of part E, which is the y-intercept. In order to find the y-intercept, we'll have to use make, make use of an equation uh, in the form of a slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, looks like this, y equals mx plus b. In this equation, you can substitute y coordinate. I don't know how to spell things. Y coordinate of any point on the line. That's what y represents. M here represents the slope of the line, which we know x represents the x coordinate of the not any point, any point story ended here we can pick any point we want, any point on the entire line there are millions of points, in the infinite number of points we can pick any points we want where we know the x and the y coordinate of course our choices are limited, we only know two points so we, we have to either work with p or r it doesn't really matter which one we work with but once we have chosen the point then y coordinate of that point goes here, 
And once we have chosen any point that we want, that doesn't matter here, but once we have chosen the point, the x coordinate of the chosen point, not just any old point. Here it was any old point, but once, it, once the point has been picked, once the point has been chosen, the same, obviously the x coordinate of the same point. And this is what we're looking for. This is our y intercept. This is a lot to absorb. This is a lot to absorb. If you have not seen these things in years, uh, you learned it probably at some point in time in your school years. But if you have not seen it in years, it's a lot to absorb. You just have to slow down and rewatch it and learn it. But you must learn it. These standard form of the line, they do appear on the exam. They're there. That's why they're in the book. They expect you to know it. So we can, So here we go. I'm going to work with point P if you like. Or let's use the point R because it's 5 and 0. 0 is easy to work with. So I'm going to work with point R. Or better yet, why don't we do both of them? Just to see, just to make you to understand that no matter which point you work with, either P or R, we're going to get the same answer. So what you do is you uh, substitute the Y coordinate of the points. So for example, if you're working with P, we put in 6 for Y negative 6 over 7 for m, and then slope of the intercept uh, and the x-intercept which is negative 2, and we solve for b. That's what it is. That's what it is. I shouldn't have used up all this room here, because now I have no place to work with. I should not have been so generous. But anyway, now you know what those things are. I'm going to give you a chance to absorb it a little bit, and then I'm going to erase the whole thing. When I tell you that I'm going to give you a little bit chance to absorb everything, that's my way of saying I need a sip of tea. So there we go. So we're going to use, here's our equation, y equals mx plus b. Let's do it twice using, using point p and using point R. We should get the same answer obviously as to why as to what the y coordinate is. So y if you're using point P, if we are using point P, the y coordinate for point P is 6. 6 equals y 6 equals six equals m which is the slope negative six over seven and the x coordinate of the point, which is negative 2, plus the b, which is the unknown. The b is the unknown. We are solving for this guy. This is the culprit. We are trying to figure out what the y-intercept is, right here. This equation, when we solve for b, should give us the same answer as this equation, using r, y equals mx plus b. If you were to use point r, in, in the case of point r, your y is 0. 0 equals m, which is negative 6 over 7, times x, x coordinate of r is 5, plus b. You see, I told you, working with this point would be easier because of the fact that it's 0, 0 makes life easier. Multiply the whole equation by 7, 7 times 0 is 0, and here we get negative 6 times 5, which gives us negative 30. And don't forget that we're multiplying the whole equation by 7, which means this the b has to be multiplied by 7. So we get plus 7b. Bring the 30 to this side, so we end up with 7b equals 30, which means b equals 30 over 7. That's our y-intercept. Let's see what this gives us. Again, multiply the whole equation by 7. So here we end up with 6 times 7 equals negative 6 times negative 2 plus 7 times b. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12, and 6 times 7 is 42, plus 7b. Subtract 12 from both sides, and you end up with 7b equals 30. Same as before, and therefore b equals 30 over 7. You see? It doesn't matter which point you use, you could use either point. Is that it? Is that the end of it? Oh, we still have to find the equation of the blasted thing, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's do the equation over here. I don't want to erase this any of this thing here. Let's do the equation over here. Remember, the slope is 
slope is uh, 6, 7 and we're going to use the point R, 5, 0. So here we have a point, we have a slope, so we're going to use point slope, point slope form. Point slope form, which goes like this. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Again, one more time, these equations, you just have to know them. You just have to know them. There is no other alternative. So y minus y1, which is y, y coordinate is 0 here. So y minus 0 equals m, which is negative 6 over 7. And then x minus x1, which is 5. Multiply the whole equation by 7. Multiply the entire thing by 7. So here we end up with 7y equals negative 6 times x minus 5. Open the parenthesis, so we get negative 6x, and then negative 6 times negative 5 is going to give us positive 30. 7y equals positive. 7y equals negative 6x plus 30. Divide the entire equation by 7, and we end up with y equals negative 6, 7, x plus 30 over 7. Voila. What do you know? That is exactly what we expected. That is exactly what we expected. It comes, see, it acquires, we start out in this form. We start out in this form, but notice we end up with the form, we end up with the, this form. We end up with a slope intercept form right here. M is your slope, M is the slope here, and that's right here, negative 6, 7, which we knew all along the slope is negative 6, 7. And 30, 30 over 7 is the y intercept. This is the y intercept. So that's how it goes. We started out with the point slope form where we end up with the slope intercept form. But that's the equation. The equation is y equals negative 6 7 x plus 30 over 7. Is that the end of it? This blasted thing has been going for a while. Yeah, that's it. And the equation of the line passing through point P and R. Well, that is all she wrote. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.